The last concept that we have to review is um, Q-learning. DQN is based on a Q-learning. Q-matrix contains Q-values. Q-values is this. Values for all state action pairs. For state values, the result was a matrix with the same dimension as a state. In here, if I have three actions and five states, I will have a matrix of size five by three because for every state, I have to know the optimal action. And here, for five states, I will have a vector of five by one. For each state, I know the value. And here, for each combination of state and action, I need to know expected reward. This is intuition, and it's a basis for Q-learning. Q-learning is an agent thinking about the consequences of action rather than rushing directly through a new state. We are going to compute the values in this matrix called Q-table. Exploration function, if we hit under some threshold, we do random action. If we not, we do planned action. For each state, here we return a list of available action. If we receive the terminal state, we return the reward that we computed. And if not, then we fill one element of a Q matrix, previous immediate reward, by immediate reward multiplied by discount and a recursive sum of previous action values. The result of that is matrix of uh, Q values. And here DQN begins, we initialize the agent. And uh, this agent under the hood creates the matrix of movement. Previously, we saw that Q-learning is built on Bellman equations for uh, estimation of uh, action values. And uh, this algorithm works uh, really well when the environment is simple, limited, and uh, the function uh, Q, S of A, can be represented uh, using a table of values. However, when there are billions of possible unique states and hundreds of available actions for each of them, the table becomes too big and tabular methods become impractical. This issue is addressed by introduction of the deep Q network or TQN. This uh, algorithm combines the Q-learning algorithm with deep neural network. And um, as you already know, DNNs are great nonlinear function approximators. Thus, DNNs is a module inserted into Q-learning to approximate the Q function and replace the need for a table to store the Q values, rather predicting them by observing past historical values. In reality, this algorithm uses two DNNs to stabilize the learning process. The first one is called the main network, represented uh, by the weight factor theta, and uh, it is used to estimate the Q values for the current state S and action A, Q S of A theta. We will use gym environment, Carpol, you already saw it. Here is the core module, DQN. You can see that uh, it is uh, pretty simple consists of uh, three fully connected dense layers with ReLU activations. So the neural network itself is pretty simple. Here are the two networks it is made of. It is a main network and a target network. Main network is uh, used for immediate updates, while target drains with some lag relative to the main. The loss consists of two parts, the main DQN approximation and target uh, DQN approximation with some weights. The optimizer, the loss function, everything is typical. Then we have a replay buffer. Replay buffer is kind of both memory of an agent and a mixer of memory. A replay buffer initially consists of the tuples. See, it has a buffer and it has a tuples of states action that were taken in the states, reward received for the action in the states, and the next state that agent moved to, and also indicator for the episodical tasks, whether the episode was finished. The rest are utilities function. Important is sampling function. Sampling function is how much samples controlled by parameter number of samples and how exactly we return samples from the replay buffer how exactly we use our experience. Here, simple logic implemented is a random choice. So whatever we decided to pick out of the replay buffer, whatever number of samples we decided to take, 
we do a random choice of exactly the same number from the available replay buffer. Then we just unpack it, uh, turn into lists, turn into torch tensors, and uh, return. That's it. Next, exploration strategy. The simplest exploration strategy is epsilon greedy. Uh, we have epsilon, the exploration rate. Uh, the larger the exploration, the more likely the agent is going to do a random action instead of the predicted. Here, we take a random number from zero to one. And if we hit under the value of epsilon, we perform random action. In other case, do what we should do. Take main neural network, this one, and approximate Q function. We give it a state and predict Q values for the state. And we select index of maximum, which decide the action. This is the index of action to take. So as you may notice, those two networks, main and target, they have exactly the same architecture and initially the same weights. Now let's consider how the training proceeds. So for the training step, we need the states, action, rewards, next states, and dance. Essentially, training steps perform on a sample from the replay buffer. It performs a training iteration on a batch of data sampled from the experience replay buffer. And the batch size is decided by number of samples. See, we predict the targets with the target connector not main. First, as I told you, we train target. For the next state, we get values. Here is your uh, Bellman equation, if you remember. We exclude terminal states because the reward there is zero. Then we multiply. Here is the sum of maximum future rewards. Here is uh, our discount. Here is immediate reward. For current states, we do prediction with main, with another network. Then we create an action mask. We fulfill actions as a one hot vector to exclude the actions that lead to terminal states. And uh, subsequently, we exclude them from Q values and that we predicted. Now we compute the loss function. And the uh, interesting thing to admit is that loss function is uh, calculated as a difference between the values predicted by my neural network and uh, the target. Now let's check drain. Here are the typical set up epsilon, batch size, discount, replay buffer. Here we typically reset reward to get to an initial state. Checking the state we are in, we select action according our epsilon greedy policy. Then we're performing the step. If you remember a lecture about the gym environment, the step function is core function of this API. By receiving action, it um, executes an interaction with environment and returns next state, received reward, identifier of whether the episode has been finished and diagnostic information. Here we conclude our total reward per episode just by adding received reward for this iteration. Then we add to experience replay our tuple of state that we were in the action that we took. I want to emphasize that we now in the next state, but we have to put this information into buffer for experience to learn later. We remember the reward and next state. Then we change state here. So now our current state is actually the next state. Then we update weights of the target neural network with main neural network once in a while. This is a hyperparameter. So every 2000 steps, we update the weights of the neural network, which we train main neural network, but pay attention to the condition according which we train. We try to minimize difference in prediction between main neural network, optimal actions and optimal actions predicted by the target neural network. So here, once in a while, we update the weights of the target neural network with main, replay buffer with sample batch size. We take this number of random samples from it. Pay attention that this buffer is not prioritized. If it were prioritized, it would contain along with two poles, states, uh, action, reward, and uh, done. It uh, should contain an additional parameter probability to choose 
Now, here is our data and we perform a train step. A train step is a function we considered earlier. This one, it returns loss. Interesting thing, we decreasing exploration rate slowly for first 950 episodes. For every episode, we decreasing the epsilon so that our exploration goes from 100% to 5% at the final stages. Then here is the logging function for plotting episode rewards every 100 years. This is a so-called vanilla DQN, but when I was young, vanilla DQN had only one neural network, only main NN, and it was highly stochastic. This is double DQN. And now it is um, treated as a default DQN model. People report that uh, this version converges much better and uh, much faster. So DQN can solve pretty complex tasks. But the flaws are first, it requires extremely large amounts of data to train. Second, it is very vulnerable to any disbalance of actions in the data. If you aim to train DQN properly, you pay more attention to the data than to the DQN itself. In fact, you have to pre-process your data that it contains equal amount recommended actions by hand. Projecting to our example, we had to literally by hand create data set which contains 100,000 cells, 100,000 bytes, and 100,000 holds to train something. On noisy data, it dies right away. 